Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the top 100 favorite games of mine of all time. Yes, yeah, sure yours. What should be the title of this video? Anyway, this is going to be the common intro for these multi-part videos where I'm going to be uh, telling you about my favorite top 10 uh, games in that batch until we reach the top 10 out of the top 100 games uh, and in these top 100 games i'll be telling that why what kind of game it is if you think that why some game is not in my top 100 the most probable answer is going to be maybe i have not played it if i have played it well maybe it's below top 100 uh, and that's why it's not in this list uh, anyway these are my personal choices everyone have their own opinion um, i have a good collection of games uh, which have some parts of bgg's top 100 some of uh, reviewers favorite games whether it's dice tower rado uh, board game co uh, and from their choices whatever matches my choice i used to purchase a lot of games and from that this top 100 has come as what i think is my favorite top 100 games so with this uh, common intro let's get on with today's segment today we'll be doing our number 81 to number 90 so let's get on with the list be number 90 and that game is quadropolis I sort of remember that game. I, I only played it once though. No, you played the whole campaign with me. I did? Yes. So Quadropolis is a Days of Wonder game about city building. A very simple city building game, but I think the, one of the most effective ones. Majority of the city building games have a similar kind of mechanism that you're going to place a tile and based on the type of the building, let's say it's a residential tile or residential building, then it's going to have rewards based on oh are there more residential buildings next to it the residential buildings don't want to be closer to the industrial building so there are going to be different kind of rules that you have to follow but also there are always going to be limited number of uh, spaces that are available on your board and you want to complete the maximum objectives the variety of the buildings are you are going to have residential buildings office buildings industrial buildings there are some special government buildings in this one and uh, not only that but it's also a drafting game because in each round there is going to be tiles placed on it and the drafting mechanism is really unique because you're going to have different numbered architects so you're going to place for example a number three architect which tells you that you can take the third tile in that row or column where you have placed but if someone has already placed a number three uh, or any kind of architect in that row then you cannot place a, an architect in that row anyway even though you wanted that particular tile so your options get limited as the game goes on as the round goes on and you have to think about that okay which tile is most precious to me and which numbered architect i want to send to pick up that tile once you have that tile then you can must place it on your board which represents your city at the end of the game you will be doing the sum of all the uh, city points in your town and whoever has completed the majority of the scoring which is going to be same every time then you're going to be the winner. Now you remember the game? I only remember what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember anything I did. I do not remember what you did. I do not remember the campaign. I have the memory of a one-year-old on a whole bucket of sugar. <laughs> so do you remember if you liked it or not? No. You don't remember. Okay, anyway. I so, don't think I would. You liked that game. I did. Yes. So anyway, that's Quadropolis, a city building game from Days of Wonder. Again, there are other city building games which became more famous than it. But if you're looking for something more simple, and even in that one, there is a lot of variety. There are different kind of tiles that you can switch. There are advanced mode for the architects also. Uh, and that's Quadropolis on number 90. On number 89 is going to be Targi or Targi. Yeah, well, no, I don't know that yeah but you have not played that one it's a two player worker placement game which comes with a unique mechanic because uh, there are going to be cards laid out in this one the outer wall is going to be the same in every game but inside cards are going to be different which are going to either depict different kind of resources salt date 
what was the, the third resource anyway uh, pepper so salt date and pepper those kind of resources will be shown or some kind of caravan cards oasis cards location cards are going to be shown how you're going to play is that you're going to play uh, first your worker in any of the row and then any of the worker other player will do the same then they you can play it in any of the column so wherever your row and column intersects not only are you going to activate those abilities which are where your worker placed worker was placed but also where the intersection of these two were formed you are going to take that card which is going to depict what resources are you going to get those resources are going to be replaced next time with something else as well so that's the game in which you're collecting those resources and using those location cards you're trying to build up a tableau or a caravan or your own tribe of target because this is based in uh, south africa somewhere or africa somewhere uh, the target tribe which uses blue color dyes uh, dye in their clothes and they are you're making that tribe each card is going to give you different kind of scoring abilities so whether you're trying to get more resources to get immediate points or you're trying to build a tableau which is going to get you end points more that's all up to you how you want to progress with it once you have enough of that tableau then the game finishes so the game is a worker placement game but that mechanism of that how your workers are going to cross and activate that's the real unique hook of this game which makes it really unique and uh, that makes it a really lovely and uh, anguish filled game because you will be always going ah oh, don't place my your worker <laughs> there because i wanted to place in this row but you placing your worker here has blocked me you kind of know what your other player is going for and you are trying to block them as well as benefit yourself as well so that's why target is a lovely game on my number 89 on number 88 is going to be machikoro Machikoro. So Machikoro is going to be very similar to Space Base. Either you have played any of those, in which you are going to have slots from one to twelve, and you are going to just roll some dice. And when you roll the dice, if you have that number of card building available in your town of Machikoro, then that ability is going to activate. You are going to get those resources. If someone else rolls that die, then there are cards which can give you resources as well, or special abilities of that card are going to be activated as well you are going to get those maximum coins uh, using those coins you are purchasing new cards which are going to so you can always think about making a tableau of a variety of numbers or making one number very powerful that's all up to you how you want to manipulate there are variety of cards so the version that we played was the deluxe version which comes with few expansions in the box and uh, so you can mix and match with a variety that okay in this game these are the cards that are going to be available next time you can play with a different variety of cards so there is a lot of versatility uh, variability available within the game shall what do you think about machikoro i don't remember <laughs> you played the whole campaign with us i don't remember i don't remember anything <laughs> so the japanese artwork one i know Okay, so initially I was hesitant on picking up Machikoro because I didn't like the artwork on its game box. It looked too much 2D, but actually the artwork on the cards inside is kind of nice. It's more clip party, but still, it's much more nicer than the 2D vector art on the box. But anyway, the game turned out to be a really fun game, and I still I think like it more than Space Base. just because of the fun factor i had with the machikoro so that's my number 88 machikoro or number 87 is going to be citadels now citadels citadels, citadels is very similar to we talked about in my number uh, 9200 series uh, talked about libertalia now libertalia is more expanded more bigger game but if you wanted a more compact game citadels is just going to give you that citadels is just a handful of cards so it comes even in a small box from fantasy flight games the newer boxes have made it more bigger and bigger with variety of characters but if you wanted a very sim smaller compact pocket size edition then even citadels is available in that as well in which each card is going to be 
having a different kind of abilities. So the first thing you are going to do is every player is going to draft that unique character and you are going to have those characters you will have some information about okay this card didn't come to me so maybe the players before me have taken these characters who took what character you don't know but anyway that's the all the information that you're going to get and when those cards go back to the first player he's going to know which cards have been removed from the hand till now each card is going to have a number and special abilities then everyone is going to when the game starts then everyone is going to play one card and then well the number will be called one two three four and whoever has that character is going to speak up that okay my character is going to activate so for example if you have an assassin or a thief which is <laughs> the most disputed characters in the game but anyway if you have an assassin you can declare okay i'm going to kill the merchant and when the merchants nobody will speak anything else when the merchants number will come then if someone is a merchant then they will reveal i'm the merchant but they don't get to use any of their ability because they will declare i've been assassinated and that's it so your assassin worked but if you said someone else's name merchant and nobody was merchant your assassination failed so are you going to do that are you going to really stop someone else or are you willing to do something what you're in the end trying to do is using these cards trying to gain some certain resources against get some points using those points or money you are trying to build a tableau of citadels the city districts certain city districts are going to give you additional bonuses if you play certain type of cards so you just based on those cards it just becomes a bigger and bigger game and if you have the right kind of group then i think this is a lovely game in which you are going to play that how what everyone is doing so one of my favorite on number 87 citadels on number 86 is going to be point, point salad, salad. So Point Salad is a very simple family game, uh, again uses drafting mechanism in which you are going to have a display of cards in front of you and you have two options. The top side is going to be uh, the upcoming cards are going to show you the back side of the card which shows you different kind of scoring mechanism. So you have an option, you are going to take some certain vegetable or you are going to take a scoring card up to you. If you don't take that scoring card, it even shows you the symbol that what fruit is going to be on its backside once it gets flipped. So if you don't need that scoring, maybe just wait and once that card flips next round face up, that's the fruit or vegetable that you need. So what you're trying to do is collect some certain vegetables and try to complete different kind of scoring methods that you have collected. So maybe you want to make a salad which is full of tomatoes. So if you have enough tomatoes, you're going to get a lot of points. Some might say that, you, okay, you need three tomatoes and three lettuces to complete that certain order. So different objectives might be there. And you're trying to say that, okay, what vegetables I need? Some scoring card might say, okay, I don't need any carrots in my salad. So you want to actively try not to take any kind of carrots in your hand. So we will try to avoid it as long as possible. So that's what you're doing in this game, picking up those cards, trying to complete those objectives and making the best salad, which is going to score you the maximum vegetable points available. I do remember a bit of this game and I think I liked it. That's all I can say, because that's all I remember. I liked it. <laughs> so you have very weak memories of uh, point salad. I don't know. Why am I, why am I like this? Okay. So that's Point Salad, a good uh, recommended game for families. So number 85 is going to be For Sale. Yes, now, this for I remember. Because we played recently. I remember this, don't worry. All right. So For Sale is a very simple auction game, which is going to have two parts. In the first part, uh, different you are going to have certain kind of money. Different houses are going to be auctioned out and you're, everyone is going to bid for the best houses. Whoever bids the most is going to get the best house and everyone else is going to who is going to bid for less is going to get those poor and poor houses. But they get to save money for bidding on better houses next time. So in this way, you're trying to get a better 
a portfolio of houses in your hand as well as save some money if possible. Once that first round is over, then you get to go for the second round in which you are selling off those houses. And then at that time, different money guards or customers are going to come and they are going to show we are willing to pay this much. Show us your best house. And everyone is going to pick just one house which they want to sell. And whoever shows the best house to the most richest customer, they will pay that money. And whoever is left even if you had selected a very good house, but the customer was willing to pay just 1000 for it, you had to sell it for one. So there is always that again, out thinking, outsmarting someone that, okay, what kind of houses they have taken, what cards they have already played and what do I need to sell this for a profit? Because in the end, once the second round is over, you will all the houses will be gone and you will be left with only some of the money that you saved from the first round as well as the money that you earned in the second half of the game. And in that way, you will be whoever has the most money is going to be the winner. So Shal, what did you think of the game? I like this game. It's simple. It has a very easy to understand. You can easily set it up with anyone. And of course, there's always that one moment where someone gets the top house for the lowest price. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes backing out is also good that, okay, somebody paid exuberant amount for a good house, but maybe other houses were good enough as well. And you back out that, okay, I don't want to pay or I want to pay only half and you still get whatever is left on the market. So again, a very good game and it can be explained very easily to people because you just have to explain one round to them don't no need to even explain the second half of the game once the first half is done then explain the second half so easy to explain game all right so that's number 85 for sale on number 84 is going to be last will i think you played it once last will what world are you living in <laughs> all right so last will is uh, a very unique game it's a euro game but it flips the script on all Euro games. In every other game, you're trying to earn money. But in Last Will, your objective is that you have a lot of money and the player who finishes all their money first is going to be the winner. Because the theme is that your millionaire uncle has died and he has left all his estate and he has said that one of my relatives who is the most poor is going to get all my money. So you have to being the relative, all the players are the relatives. And now you have to finish your money before everyone else. And whoever finishes their money, they become the poorest player. And then they will be the winner because they will win the state of your rich uncle. And that's the theme of this game. But it's actually the uh, ludicrous options that you're going to get in this one, which are going to make this game so funny. Because sometimes you will be saying, okay, I'm going to do a dinner reservation, pay money for it, and never go to that dinner reservation because I'm going to go to theater instead. So I've wasted money on two locations. Sometimes you will say, oh, I'm going on a dinner, but I will be bringing a horse to the dinner to eat that food. So the restaurant will be charging you more, a horse. So you have to pay more for bringing a horse in our restaurant. You will be saying, there you go. So. There are these kind of stupid options that you will be doing. Sometimes you will be purchasing properties in this house and then letting those properties ruin. You'll be buying them at a high price and then let them go to ruin. Once the value is really zero or nothing, then you will sell that house because you want to lose money. Sometimes you will just have cooks keep cooking food in that house and then you will fire all those cooks, keep wasting the money and that's what you're doing. You're hiring people in this one to waste money. You're having your friends in the house and having parties to waste money. So all these different options. In the end, you're still playing a Euro game, but it's just the uh, theme of this game that makes it so much fun. So that's my number 84, Last Will. On number 83 is going to be Doom, the board game. As in based on the video game. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so this is the second edition of the game which came in 2016 uh, and the first edition didn't get that much success. The second edition uh, was much better. 
still didn't get as much success but i think it's a much better game because this was based on descent formula but what they change is that instead of being a pure dice chucker it still has dice you're still going to roll to see who gets the damage but there are now cards in this one which are going to elevate it above descent now it's still a one versus all game in which one player is going to be controlling the invader army and the other marines are trying to complete different kind of objectives but the, how the marine play is that they have different kind of cards which are representing different kind of guns in the game so you're going to have all your standard plasma rifle your static uh, your heavy machine gun uh, even special weapons like the bfg and the chainsaw and the chain gun those are going to be there. Rocket launchers are going to be there in this game. Whenever you pick up any weapon, you're going to also get those cards and shuffle them in your deck. And then using that deck, you're playing those cards. Those cards are going to have some special abilities. So you have to think, okay, which ability do I want to activate in this round, which is going to let me move, shoot. When you shoot, then you use certain number of dice based on what weapon you used. And that's how the game is different from uh, your regular descent. But Overall, it's still a dungeon crawler. You will be moving around and killing a lot of bad guys in this one until you complete the objective. Um, now, the base game is, again, as I said, one versus all. But we prefer to play it as co-op as well. So I have made, uh, and some other BGG users have made some co-op versions of it as well. Uh, you can find those rules on the BGG file, sec uh, file section. You can get those co-op rules and using those co-op rules, you can play this game as a co-op game as well in which the enemies have some kind of pre-programmed artificial uh, intelligence movement that what enemies are going to do and it's still going to pose a good enough challenge for you to play against using the game's default missions so that's doom okay a lot of thoughts and not all of them are positive because it certainly is a very complicated game and sometimes things just go way too out of hand the monsters the monsters are my biggest problem because at least how my father does the mechanism there are too many of them they are coming way too fast and you cannot move at all you just don't know what to do but you still win yeah <laughs> so it doesn't a, help a, how much a good co-op game you should win only 50 percent of the time that's my rule of a good co-op game it should be challenging enough we are winning more than that. Way right. more than that. So that makes it bad. Yeah, that, that makes it very easy. Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't really know what to say on this game at the same time. Except for the fact that he keeps running after every weapon in the game. While me and my mother are trying to just do the objective and I don't know, survive. Because I'm a peaceful person. I like weapons, but I don't use them. <laughs> this, this man. <laughs> All right. So that's number 83, Doom. On number 82 is going to be Arboretum. Now, Arboretum is a very peaceful and hateful card game. <laughs> well, peaceful because of Bud Sobel's artwork beautiful trees in this one you're trying to make uh, rows of trees you're make, trying to make an arboretum so you, each tree is going to have there are different uh, well types of trees in this one and each tree is going to have a number one to nine i think and then you're one to eight and then you're going to try and play them so the bigger sequence that you can make from one to eight the better but also you want to keep one card at least in your hand because only the players who have at least one card in their hand gets to score that but maybe you were making a really beautiful arboretum of pine trees and then you find out that someone else has the number seven of pine and you had in your hand number four of pine and they get to score all their pines and how many pines do they have in their arboretum zero so they get zero score but how much score do you get zero because you don't get to score at all only the player who has the highest number of that card in their hand at the end of the game gets to score those trees and that's why it's a very hateful game because you can try to hold on to the cards when you see that other players what cards are they trying to put in their arboretum 
you can try to hold off those cards and not release them to the discard pile so that others don't take it from that so you can do that but the game doesn't make that easy because that means you are letting the chance go of making your own arboretum you are letting the chance go of picking up the cards that you need because the hand limit is well the number of cards are limited in your hand so maybe you are limiting yourself so it, what starts as a very peaceful game becomes a really troubling hateful vengeance filled game by the end in which you wish demons were there on these cards <laughs> rather than trees at the end and that's why it makes it my number 82 arboretum very worthy of that position it ruins so many friendships all right and the last one for today is going to be on number 81 time stories yeah <laughs> so time stories uh, came very early on before there was much of a trend of uh, these puzzle uh, and uh, escape room type games puzzle uh, uh, time stories came in that during that time and the concept was really unique so it was an adventure game but in the adventure game you're trying to explore you can go to different areas it works based on a card mechanism so whatever location you go to you will be displaying a number of cards to make the picture of that area and then you can interact with different locations there which will tell you okay now open these set of cards to interact with that location the more you interact with the more time you are utilizing but the time is limited as well because if you are unable to complete your objective in that time frame the time finishes and now a new time loop has to start if a new time loop starts the good thing in this one is or the main key hook in this game is that you as a player have the memories you are from a time agency and you keep the memories of everything that you have done so maybe you know that okay that was a dead end or maybe x player or x character in the game give us this hint so i don't need to go to that character again to get that hint i already know the answer to that or i already know the story what's happening you're trying to solve the mystery and get to the end whatever is the mystery in that one and then you can try to find the shortcuts through the story what are the minimum things that i need to do to get to the end so going through loops and loops that's what you're trying to do the bad thing about this one some of these things you have to do so much repetitively that it becomes laborious that's why tedious. it's it becomes tedious that's why it's lower on my list uh story wise now you have to get all the expansions to fully understand the campaign and you have to read a lot of story outside of the what comes in the card as well so if you are not reading the things on present on the website and not all the links on the website also work because the game is old now so you will be missing key parts of the story and it won't make much sense but if you can i have a separate video of telling you all the lore and the time about the story of time stories so if you are interested you can listen to that as well but if you invest enough time in this one then it's a very interesting story in which you will be going through different eras and solving different kind of stories missions adventures to come up with different expansions have different kind of uh, variety but my this number 81 is for the complete time stories season 1 whatever all the expansions combined together is going to be my number 81 I love this game, especially the story. And honestly, I'm quite sad that it's old cuz as far as I know, I don't think there's any continuation. There is now they are making some time stories but those are mostly independent boxes. They are yeah, not like, a continuation of the story. Yeah, because we sort of got left on the cliffhanger. No, we finished it. No, we. Uh well, it was yeah, it was sort of cliffhanger, yes. It's sort of a cliffhanger and I We we really wanted to just see where the story would just continue to go, and such. But now there's really no such continuation, and it does make me sad. But hey, it was fun while it lasted. All right, so that's number eighty one time stories, and that brings us to a finish of another ten top ten section of the top one hundred games of all time. So hope you are enjoying this list and as always if any of these match your recommendations as well 
just leave that in the comment if based on these recommendations you think i should be playing some other game which you think i would enjoy then leave that in the comment as well see you next time and happy gaming happy gaming who's going to press stop now <laughs>